And according to the most recent stock assessment, Atlantic red snapper is more abundant today than anyone alive has ever seen. However, instead of celebrating this success, we're here because they, there have been draconian and punitive proposals made to managing this stock. This year, despite the growing stock, the recreational red snapper system uh, season was two days. Two days. House Republicans made the rules and now it's up to you to figure out how to balance um, constituent needs with your own bad politics. Over the last four years, Congress has appropriated in a bipartisan fashion $5 million for an independent study of red snapper stock in the South Atlantic. Now, moving straight to closures before we get the results from the South Atlantic red snapper count defies common sense. Mr. Chris, um, can you share why it's important for fishery management councils and the National Marine Fishery Service to base regulations and management decisions on the best available science, not delaying actions for years um, until new data becomes available, which to me seems an awful li like an effort to just delay new regulations. Uh, thank you, Congresswoman. Uh, I think the tenant of using the best available science for decision making has ensured uh, that the Magnuson-Stevens Act has achieved many of the objectives it set forth uh, to do and achieve uh, in rebuilding stocks and, this, and assuring the sustainable management of our fisheries, uh, which has made our fishery um, sector uh, successful and uh, something that we can maintain in the long term. When new data, Dr. Chris, from the Great Red Snapper Count is available, will that be used in NOAA's fisheries management decisions? Uh, thank you, Congresswoman. Uh, yes, the intent for the South Atlantic Great Red Snapper Count is to uh, use the information similarly as was done in the Gulf uh, to inform management decisions regarding the Red Snapper in the South Atlantic. Okay, moving on to the Sharked Act. What we've seen is uh is a resurgence of shark populations, which is, which is good. But what we've also seen with that is shark depredation, which is essentially a very, very uh, high frequency of the taking of fishermen's catch. Uh, while we understand it's a natural, natural part of predation, it also is becoming a widespread issue in our waters and has increased rapidly in recent years. And our anglers are losing their catch and tackle to sharks at alarming rates, and in some areas it makes areas totally unfishable because you're not able to compete with the sharks to actually uh, to bring your catch to the boat. I introduced the Shark Act to study this issue and look into ways to improve sport fishing conditions for anglers while protecting sharks, and I think that we can do both. This bill duplicates an existing report that NOAA already submitted to Congress. It also adds a section on shark depredation research projects into the Magnuson-Stevens Fishery Conservation and Management Act without authorizing additional funding. This means funding for stock assessments, bycatch regulation, habitat conservation will be redirected toward the niche issue of shark depredation. Is it realistic to expect NOAA to complete these research projects without additional funding? Thank you, Congresswoman. It, uh, it is true that uh, should this legislation move forward, uh, NOAA does not currently have the resources available to uh, implement it. And um, as I've stated, since we're already doing uh, uh, so much on depredation at this time, we just see a lot of overlap. So we have the funding we need for the, uh, for the studies we're currently doing and, and would, uh, um, and so thank you for recognizing. So we that. don't need this bill. It will um, be difficult to actually deliver on because of the funding um, restrictions. So House Republicans made the rules and now it's up to you to figure out how to balance um, constituent needs with your own bad politics. I yield back.